Hi, you're tuning in to Awani Review with me, Cynthia Ng. The COVID-19 pandemic has hit many businesses and for many tech entrepreneurs who have emerged in recent years, they are likely experiencing the first major business crisis. So on this show today, we want to take a look at what they can do to overcome this ongoing crisis. And joining me on the show is Ben Lim. He is the co-founder and managing partner of Nextia Angels. Nextia is a startup accelerator. They are also angel investors, a group of angel investors since 2015. Correct me yep, if I'm wrong. You guys right. have invested in about 35 startups in Southeast Asia. Thank you, Ben, for having us in your beautiful home, firstly, and coming on the show. So, Ben, um, why angel investing? Because I, as I understand, angel investors usually come in during the early stage of a startup, right? As compared to, say, uh, VC, they come in at the later stage, which is the growth stage. So, what yes. is it about angel investing that you like? Okay, very interesting question. I think um, angel investing is... I would say, at least for some parts, it's harder than venture capital in the sense that you've got to help the startups a lot more um, in their early phases. And the kind of help that they need um, is, is basically what they don't have yet, mm -hmm. which is usually experience, network, um, industry knowledge. right? So. For us, because we have angel in investors with us that are really, really experienced, they are, they are CEOs uh, of multinationals uh, in Malaysia, uh, abroad as well. Um, they are business owners um, as well, uh, listed, non-listed as well, uh, private companies. Um, and, and they are very much rooted in the business community and because of that they are able to help so much um, and and that is the beauty of angel investing actually um, by by putting in you know relatively small money compared to vcs um, we also put in a lot of our sweat right in terms of um, helping them to to grow further as leaders, to push their companies, um, to put in the right processes, the right structure, um, to to grow in a way that that a lot of business owners don't normally see themselves uh, doing. Right, uh, angel investing allows us to do that and it fits very well with our mentors because they are, it's not just about the money mm -hmm. for them, um, it's very much about giving back right. to the business community, to the entrepreneurial community uh, in Malaysia. So I'd like to get straight into our topic which is the pandemic and how it has affected so many uh, startups. I believe perhaps some of your portfolios, maybe some have done well and some may not have done so well yep. can you give us an your assessment about the health of the uh, tech startup space and from an angel investors perspective in terms of funding for instance right mm. have you been more cautious now how is it like just give us a sense on okay. the situation so a lot of startups out there are of course not doing as well a lot of um a lot of early money for them is now um, less accessible because for startups that are just starting out, normally it's the pharma fund, the father-mother fund, mm -hmm. um, or, or it's, it's their friends, or if, if they can find, um, we, we, we have this term in the industry, uh, the three Fs, family, friends and fools, right? So if they're able to find some, then that's where they usually get their initial investments. Um, so the tricky thing now is a lot of businesses are affected mm -hmm. uh, and so are these uh, family and friends funds. Um, so right now, I, a lot of startups uh, find it a tiny bit harder to um, raise money like that. Yeah. As an investor, are you spoked? Are you pulling back funds? Um, as an investor, 
it's business as usual, mostly. Um, not entirely, of course. Um, a lot of things, of course, went online and, and the, I would say the digitization process or, or the um, exactly that the digitization process as, as a country or, or, or in the corporate community has accelerated. Right. Um, therefore, it's, it's a good thing actually um, coming out of a crisis. I, I would, and because of that, I would say as an investor, um, it does help a certain segment of startups, but it doesn't help another segment of startups. For example, tourism right now is badly hit, right? A lot of the startups in, in this particular industry um, will not be doing well in this particular situation. Um, so, but, but then, you know, going back to why I'm not spooked, uh, it's because we have to filter for the best companies. Ten years from now, we have to scout them and find them, those that are doing, those that are really doing well ten years from now. Um, and we have to do it today, right? And my job, and I'll, I'll share some numbers here if you don't mind. Yes, please. I, we actually go through about a thousand pitch decks every year. Um, they all apply on our website. And out of the thousand, and because this is a very competitive space, I'm only able to fund about two or three of them each year. Uh, that's about 0.3% or so, right? Very competitive. Uh, so because of that, MCO or no MCO, or COVID or no COVID, um, I have to find the best anyway. So, so do you have a checklist usual. in terms of what you look up for? Because it's three companies, two to three out of a thousand, you must be really picky on who you choose, right? Tell us about what goes into your mind. What, is the what are the considerations? Mm. Yep. So at Nexia, we have um, something we call startup fundamentals. Uh, within it, it's the usual things in the pitch deck. It's, it's, we didn't recreate the wheel here. Um, most investors will look for similar things, which are the team, the market size uh, that the startup is in, uh, their product, uh, is it validated or not? Does their business model make sense to their customers? You know, um, that there's a whole bunch of factors here. Uh, most of it, I would say, cannot can be changed, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, most of it can be changed, but some of it cannot be changed. Um, so for example, once you've picked the market, you're stuck with it, right? And you've got to, you've got to fight within that market or risk failing. Um, the team as well, very hard to change, especially in early stages. Um, later stages, you know, CEOs can be fired and hired, but in the early stages, the founders play a very important role uh, in, in sort of giving birth to a company, to a startup, and it's no easy task. Uh, it's one of the, I, I would argue, the hardest job in the world, right? Uh, and that's why that is one of the people usually say the team is one of the most important factors. So I'd like yeah. to get a sense of uh, how your portfolios have been performing, especially during that three-month lockdown period, mm -hmm. right? Have any of the companies failed? Have any of our companies failed? Yes, yes, of course, it's normal. Um, so during this duration, right? This lockdown. During this duration, yeah. yes. Why? Why did they fail? Uh, that one company failed partly because, and it's it's not really COVID related they were already struggling before COVID, right? Uh, but the reason is partly he's a solopreneur, a, a single entrepreneur, um, and partly um, the validation of the business was not completed uh, successfully. Founders, of course, they try their best, 
they, they, they do their best and, and they, they try to validate as much as they can. And, and he did all that. He, he did what was needed, right? But sometimes, you know, in, in a business, uh, it, it, do, doing a startup, you're not, you sometimes you just cannot find a route. You, you try as many ways as possible, but sometimes you find nothing. It's very normal in the industry. So unfortunately, that's what happened uh, to this particular startup. What yeah. about companies that have done well in your portfolio during the MCO? So the sectors that are doing well, um, particularly, are those that are supporting, in a way, digitization of uh, the economy, right? So um, La Passa, for example, mm -hmm. uh, is a B2B um, startup that um, is in the area of procurement. So what they try to do is to digitize the procurement process to make it more efficient, right? So they have been <coughs> a growth during the MCO? They have grown during the MCO okay. um, and, and it's quite interesting growth as well. Uh, so businesses like that do well. Uh, I have another one that is doing a little bit of um, digitizing uh, the, the usual clock in and clock out, right? Uh, but they've used technology to make it more, um, more interactive and a lot more functions can be put in. So for example, someone would, would clock in to the job mm -hmm. and use that same app to show proof of work, right? So for businesses that are working from home, um, the, the, the startup's name is House, H-A-U-Z, if you, if you want to check it out. Uh, they, they allow um, businesses to, to work from home more uh, because work can be checked through the app now. So supervisor may not need to breathe down the neck of the staff anymore, right. for example. Yeah. Okay. So I imagine, right, this current environment could be an upside for someone like you because there are definitely more struggling companies, distressed assets that are ripe for the picking. So are mm -hmm. you on the hunt looking for bargains, discounts right now? We don't quite look for bargains like that. Um, but there are startups that are always fundraising. Um, and startups tend to overvalue themselves. It's, it's sort of a norm. Uh, for some reason, uh, and if startups, so sometimes if startups come and come with a reasonable valuation, sometimes we will get shocked as well because it's it's uh, it's not we, a norm. Yeah, it's it's very rare that we see that. Um, if we see one, I have seen one undervalued, right? Undervaluing themselves, we we were shocked. Uh, but but then sometimes it turns to be a red flag as well, right? why would someone undervalue themselves? Do they lack uh, a bit of you know, uh, inside knowledge on how to value companies? Mm -hmm. Is it just that? If it's just that, it's fine. Right? But if they know something that's not supposed to be there, then it's, it's a whole other matter. So you know, we, we, we dig deeper into such cases and so on. Yeah. What are some of the sectors that you may be uh, more excited about investing in the coming half or second half of 2020? Okay, um, in the second half of 2020, um, it, it, it's not usually such a short period. It's normally over the next five, 10 years. Okay. Um, so we are really excited about AI, of mm -hmm. course, that's a given. Um, and, and actually, we are open to a lot of industries, uh, you know, because of the nature of our angel investment network. Our, at Nexia, the angel investors come from a whole bunch of different backgrounds. Uh, so I have investors that are in the F&B space. Mm -hmm. I have investors that are in the manufacturing space, um, commodities, bonds. 
uh, media, uh, and, and so on, even automotive, right? So startups that, that apply to us, when they ask us, you know, what industries do we look for, we normally tell them any industry is fine with us. Uh, but what we really look at, uh, actually, is the type of business, right? It has to be a fast-growing company, and there are, there are just two main business models that, that allow that. Um, first one is subscriptions, right, of, of anything. It could be, even, even if it's a business that deals on contracts, that is sort of a subscription, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and marketplaces. So um, most people, when, when, when I say marketplace, they may think of Shopee or Lazada. Right. But um, even Grab is a marketplace, right? Because there are buyers and sellers. Someone has to drive, someone has to be the passenger. So that's a marketplace as well. So within these two business models, it's either subscriptions or fees. And that's, that's clear for us that a startup um, it potentially uh, is, is a scalable model. Yeah. And have you seen any good ones of late? Of late? With the, uh, what has, has happened with COVID, right? Do you mm -hmm. see an emergence of certain companies that maybe were not on your radar before, mm -hmm. but now they have starting to show that, hey, they could be something? I think because we stick to our startup fundamentals, it's sort of back to the same uh, answer before where COVID or no COVID, we are still looking for the same kind of companies. Um, it's m most of our funding activities are not changed uh, because at the end of the day, COVID is here temporarily, I hope. We hope. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about the importance yeah. of having a good ongoing relationship with uh, venture capitals okay. and angel investors like yourself because during the MCO, uh, what, uh, one of the biggest uh, downfall really for someone, let's say a new startup, is the inability to meet people like you, to travel, yep. you know, to make a pitch for instance. This is a new mm -hmm. challenge. And for an up and coming startup, what would be your advice to them? Okay. Um, so, my advice will be quite simple, um, is to still try and build a relationship with angels or venture capital. Um, and there's a few ways to do it. Um, one way is to keep up regular updates, right? So once you've met an angel investor or a VC, um, and I, 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 I've seen a lot of startups say they will give updates and then I don't hear from them. Mm -hmm. So that's not a good way to maintain a relationship, right? So, um, and on the other hand, there are some startups, although very few, that actually continue to give updates even a year or two years later. To proactive. Right? Yeah, they are proactive. Um, and, and they understand that relationship is a long-term game. So that's, that's good. Um, so, so that's one way. Um, and, and even if it's a video call, uh, yeah, of course, please leave your video on. Don't turn it off. Because uh, the face interaction is still very important. Uh, most founders that I, 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 I talk with, they sometimes can get slightly defensive. Mm. Right. My advice um, for people who tend to be protective of their ideas uh, is to try not to be defensive. Try to be open. Uh, try to take it as advice. It's okay um, that ideas get criticized uh, because only with that can we make the ideas better. Right. First, we gotta. Sometimes we gotta break things down mm -hmm. in order to rebuild it in a better way. So. Um, yeah, that's some of the advice that I would like to share. Now, I understand uh, quite a number of next year's uh, mentors and partners mm -hmm. uh, have a, a wide experience in, in different sectors. And a lot of them have also braved the 1997, 1998 mm -hmm. Asian financial crisis. And now we are in the COVID crisis. If you can share with us, right, uh, what 
how has this been different compared to the previous crisis? And mm. um, what, how do you overcome this, really? Yep. So interestingly, this crisis compared to the ones in the past, um, we are seeing government pumping a lot of cash into the market. And because of that, um, we are seeing um, a bounce, right? Even the stock markets are pretty exciting during a su supposedly a downturn, right? Um, not exciting for all companies, of course, but nevertheless, uh, I, I hear investors talk about the stock market almost every day lately. <laughs> Um, so, the, the, the difference in the crisis is that cash and because of that, companies are able to bounce back a little bit faster mm. than the previous crisis. Um, my, my main worry though is if there's a resurgence, that will, that will really affect a lot of startups. So although nobody wants it, I think first of all startups have to prepare for that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the the crisis is if if you're a if you're a tech startup that does digitization uh, or, or of of most things and and you can benefit from the crisis, um, for them it's a great opportunity, right? For, for those that are in the, maybe not the right industries right now, um, uh, for example, travel, mm. then, you know, uh, I, I've pivot. seen startups pivot a little bit, uh, either temporarily or maybe for them, in some cases, I, w I would agree it's a new normal, mm. right? So it's, a, it's probably a permanent pivot. Um, but then, but then you know, it's for the temporary pivots. They've got to return somehow to their original business, why they were funded in the first place. Right. If they don't go back to that and they stick with the pivot, it's it's somewhat a, a loss of focus, right? So, you know, we some of those startups got to be careful there as well. So we're speaking about you know the threat of a resurgence of cases, right? Mm. It's without a vaccine, the threat will always be there. Mm -hmm. Are there ways for startups to be more insulated, to be less affected, and to prepare themselves in the yep. event of a resurgence of anything, another crisis? Yep. So um, I I was having a chat with one of my angel investors and uh, I was, was learning from him, right? And one of the things that he shared, which is his life learnings, is that he's always kept a year's worth of cash, right? Some may argue it's, it's a lot, right, for a business to keep, because they could be growing with that money, right? So it's, it's, for some people, they may look at it as a opportunity cost. Um, but for him, it actually saved his business twice, right? And the entire 12 months of cash was actually used, all dried up, right? Uh, and, and from there, they came back, they bounced back and, and did even better, right? So without the, the 12 months cash, um, his business would not be here today. So similar for any crisis, right? So he, he survived two crises already with a simple strategy like this. Um, so, so that's one advice that I think is important to share. It may not be 12 months, it could be six months, it could be three months, right? Um, so if, if you, know, you had three months of cash saved up, you'd still be fine today, probably. Um, as, as business is starting to bounce back a little bit. So, keeping cash. cash. Yeah. Okay, all right. That's right. Thank you so much, Ben, for your sharing, for your insights. It's been great speaking with you. You've been watching Our Money Review with me, Cynthia Ng. Till we see you again on the next episode. Bye bye.
Thank you.